it's it's such a privilege being the pastor of this church that is celebrating now 30 years uh, 30 years of impact upon people within the church and people out in our community uh, it's a great group of people and it always has been well, I think people were initially very kind and welcoming to us, but we could, it was very clear that they loved each other, quickly folded us in, and so it was just very welcoming, the, the genuineness of their friendships. To become here as a new member, you will begin to feel that almost immediately from the first time you walk in the door. There will be handshakes and, and even, even hugs. Even though you might not want to be hugged, you might get hugged anyway. <laughs> you know, I am a younger single person, and so I come to, to the church here by myself. And what's great about this church is it's kind of like, even though my family's not sitting in the pew with me, it kind of feels like it's family. We've got people from all walks of life, from all ages, which uh, makes it a, a wonderful church for me to pastor. It's always interesting because of the diverse backgrounds and uh, places where people are in life. In the past few years, we've seen a, a, a huge thrust for there to be more intergenerational uh, fellowship with one another. There, has been, there have been attempts made to, to be able to facilitate that and to embrace that and um, that we might learn from one another and that's encouraging. There comes a time to where the seniors need to step aside and mentor the younger ones. And the thing that I love about when I look at Adam, I know, I know the pastor's doing it with him. I know his mother and daddy are encouraging him. And it, it's beautiful to see a young man like that, that, uh, that the Lord is blessing. It's sort of a profound reality to be, uh, to be someone who loves the people here, who loves this church, who genuinely wants to be here and would be here regardless, and to have the session call and say, we'd like you to consider coming on staff here in a pastoral role. Uh, that, that for me was both terrifying, um, but, but so exciting. And getting to stand up there, I guess the thing I, I get to see is all these faces out there who the common thing isn't the football team we like, it isn't the neighborhood we live in, it's the Savior that we come to worship. And that's what I think people recognize when they come here. The worship in our church is par excellence. You can almost reach out and touch and feel the work and the power of the Holy Spirit. One of the first times I was able to look out and see my son singing along with some of these songs, that was that was probably one of the moments that got me got me more emotional than anything. You know, all the all the songs we sing, you know, we will be, we will be reading scripture and all of a sudden I'll say, We sang that, we sang those words. So those all those hymns were inspired by the Holy Spirit. It's important that as we sing that we know what we're seeing about, or as we confess our faith, that we know why we're doing these things and what the, what the purpose behind it is. And so I, I try to uh, teach the congregation along the way, sometimes very subtly, sometimes in small ways, sometimes by telling them the background story of a hymn uh, to engage them so that they know why they're singing it and they know some background behind what we're doing. The joy of being in a a church family that that worships and sings with their whole heart and joyfully that that always blesses me every and I have the privilege of seeing that every Sunday because of being in the choir the choir is my right arm in ministry I tell them all the time and try to reinforce that they are worship leaders they're up there helping model for the congregation uh, helping lead in the singing of the congregation um, and inspiring the congregation to join in in worship. But it's also a family. The choir is made up of uh, instruments that are people, that are individuals with uh, individual lives. 
And yet all these individuals are coming together and lending their voice into one unit and proclaiming these great truths of the scriptures and of the gospel. It's really a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful small picture of what the whole church really looks like. Then Pastor Dale gets up and he opens the word and he introduces the, the word to us and, and it's like it comes alive. And there again, that's the Holy Spirit. The sermon blends beautifully with the music and how they tie in and one is teaching and complimenting the other. He gets right down to the, to the meat of the scriptures. And to me, there's a lot of Sundays when I'm in there, he's talking directly to Jack. What I love about our worship is that it brings me to the point where I want to get up and preach. And I go in as a worshiper, not just as a leader in worship, but as a worshiper. And, and it, it brings me to the point where then the exposition of the Word of God seems so appropriate and then we respond again in worship and then we go out into mission. You know, the Bible speaks today uh, very clearly and exactly the way that it was written. And so from an elder's perspective of, of guarding the scriptures and guarding what's taught in the classrooms, um, I think what we have here is great Sunday school teachers uh, no matter what level you're at, whether you're just getting into the Bible the first time or you've been around the Bible all your life, we've got Sunday school classes that meet you where you are. And every time you open the Bible and you read the same passage you read yesterday, all of a sudden it speaks differently to you today. You know, so it, it is, it's just a, a learning process and the Sunday school teachers are wonderful. I'm always impressed with the, the depth of our people that we have that we can turn to that just are so mature in their walk, and, and but yet so gracious. They're just they're humble and they're they're completely approachable, and actually can relate to what the situations are in, and usually put it in layman's terms because I'm I'm pretty pretty much a layman in, in all my aspects. The teaching here is one of the things that drew us to St. Andrews. It's wonderful to worship in the congregation and and to be together in one voice, praising the Lord and and sharing the message that day. But the, the real bonding takes place as we get to know each other, and that's what we've been able to do through the, the Sunday school class and through our home fellowship groups. We're not just called to get members, we're called to make disciples. And that's where the uh, knowing him deeper and deeper, loving him more and more, takes place over a lifetime, Lord willing. The knowing Jesus Christ in a real and personal way is the key to all of it. Uh, that's the key to our growing in grace, our growing in uh, knowledge uh, of Jesus Christ. You can't love somebody you don't know. Uh, you can't enjoy somebody you don't know, maybe from a distance, uh, but uh, you've got to know someone. From a leadership perspective, we want to filter through the gospel. Um, and so whether it is Wednesday night dinner, um, whether it is children's programming or youth ministries, whatever we try and do, we filter through the gospel so that at any point in time we go, how does this communicate the gospel? Uh, so maybe that is, most people wouldn't think Wednesday night dinner does that, but there's something very transcendent about eating a meal with your family. And so that is a unique opportunity for us to sit there as, again, as the body and, and use that as a time to train one another in, in righteousness. This is what we're called to do. And so that also comes through the gospel, through this common bond. People are just sharing their day and sharing their week. And, you know, and the, the children are running around outside. And um, it's, it's just a fun place to be. You know, having your kids here is, is one of the things where, especially being on staff, they, they're, they're here. You know, they're going to be here all the time. It's important for me that, that they love being here. I stepped into the role and absolutely fell in love with it. Um, not only because I've grown up at St. Andrews, but also just because uh, 
I do have a love for this church and a love for the people. It has been wonderful to see our kids knowing more about what our church believes, which is the biblical truths that is so foundational. Our children's ministry is infants all the way to fifth grade, and we work a little bit with Bible stories, the catechism that they're learning, which are questions and answers based on biblical truths, and then we also have a game time, so we have a lot to fit in. These children are our future generation, our future St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church. And when they get older, they will be able to answer questions and to know what they believe and why they believe it. You only have the voice of a child for a small period of time in your life. And when it's grown up, it's grown up. And so we really encourage them to understand the importance of leading worship with a child's voice. And it has been a joy to see them grow in Christ. And it is also becoming more and more evident of how we are training up the next generation of worshipers. It's more than teaching these children music, it's teaching them how together to glorify God through music. They're learning to do music with excellence to glorify God, and they're learning to read music. So when they're looking at the hymnals, when they are um, approached to play handbells or uh, asked to join the adult choir, they're not gonna feel like, I can't do it. They're gonna have a sense of appreciation, and it's my prayer that they'll go for it and um, continue worshiping together. The youth are super important in the church uh, for, for many reasons um, and it's always said that they are the future of the church or they're the future in their schools or they're the future in our, in, in our society. I did most of my growing up in Missouri in the St. Louis area and in terms of family I, I grew up in the church and uh, went to church all of my life but it was really when I was in high school that I began to really understand the gospel and see it applying in my life and that the Lord began to call me uh, toward ministry. I grew up in a Christian home, a Presbyterian home in Tennessee. And, but it really wasn't until I was about a sophomore in high school that it really kind of dawned on me that Jesus Christ was to be the Lord of my life. Well, that's the age a lot of their friends are going other ways, and um, it's really important to have someone here that they can um, be connected to in the church um, and that they can come to for help or encouragement, or um, and also um, come from around other teenagers who are Christians and um, finding encouragement in that and enjoying that time together. When you get a text message from a kid saying, thank you so much for sending me a card last week. Um, it really brightened my day, or you really don't know what's going on right now, but that card or that text really helped me um, in some form, way, or fashion. It's cool, my, my favorite part about the job is seeing them grow and seeing them coming through something that they were going through and um, coming through stronger and um, closer with the Lord. and. Um, just watching them grow up from middle school through high school, just the best things about my job. So. Back to our mission in terms of uh, helping people to serve Him better, that's the natural outworking of knowing Jesus and loving Him more. Uh, it, it would be wrong for us to keep it to ourselves. By knowing Him, we're able to do what He's called us to do, and that's to serve Him. And it gives us the venues to going out to the community. So that they can see that the um, St. Andrews isn't just a building sitting on a hill. It's a, a body of people. I get uh, emails all the time from people at work that are surprised to hear I was a member of the church that had the awesome car show. They're just so inspired that the church is just such a part of the community. And they were asking, you know, what, what does the church gain by offering this? And uh, we said nothing. It's laying pride at the door before you come in. Uh, 
not many people want to be the one to take out the trash, but here you, you have an opportunity to serve in that way and really let go of, of status, let go of stature, and, and just be a servant. This is how we're called to live. Um, so we practice that in-house, then our people go and they live that way in the community as well. One of the things that we do annually that we, we love here for our children in the Worship and Arts Ministry is the Music and Arts Camp that we do. And uh, I've always said that that week, if you could bottle the amount of creative energy that's happening in that one week of time, it would be an amazing thing. They can choose from 20 different electives where they can do hands-on work in the arts and they come together as a choir. Uh, this year we had about 175 kids. And it's just a neat experience and a great time to see these smiling children just enjoying the Lord and enjoying working in the arts. Uh, that's a real highlight for our summer here. We want to build bridges to our community, bridges to our church, uh, which in turn is a bridge to the Lord Jesus Christ. And then we do, from time to time, uh, go overseas. There are such great needs in our world, and we've chosen certain areas of the world where instead of uh, going to many, many different areas, we go back to these same areas and go deeper with them and build relationships with them so that we have sister churches in other parts of the world, like in Ukraine and Haiti and England. I love children and I love music, so anytime you can, you know, mesh the two of those together, I'm all in for that, um, which is how I ended up um, getting involved in the Ukraine trip to Belgorod, Ukraine, because it was a music camp for children. Um, it was really cool for me to be able to go and be a part of that and be a part of a group um, that's just such a wide range. You know, we had several musicians um, on the trip with us, and then we had um, several people who, you know, had no mus musical background whatsoever. So it was just, it was cool to watch, um, you know, how they just soaked it in and they loved it. Not only did they soak it in and learn about music, but um, they, they, you could see like their, their yearning, you know, to understand what we were trying to teach them as well. And so we're taking what we know, uh, not only loving on one another, but it's so much important to take it outside of these walls, uh, into our schools, into our workplaces, um, and then taking it around the world. And that's what we're about, sharing Christ. Sharing Him, telling others what we have learned, telling others the walk that we have made, and, and come alongside and, and let us introduce you. So I wouldn't be anywhere else. I love St. Andrew's Church. We're enjoying what's going on right now, but we look forward to what He's going to do and the, the future history of St. Andrew's Presbyterian. But in every case, it's all about Him. It's all about Christ. <laughs>